And what a splendid contemplation, when one imagines them as they might, in the future be seen by some great protecting policy of government, preserved in their pristine beauty and wilderness, in a magnificent park, a nation's park, containing man and beast, and all the wild and freshness of their nature's beauty. These were the words of artist George Catlin in 1831, as he gazed upon the pristine wilderness of the American West. Little did he know, his contemplations would lay the groundwork for a monumental shift in American history. Today, this sentiment is realized through our extensive national park system that protects over 52 million acres of land across the U.S. Once called the best idea America ever had, we are reminded of the enduring legacy of those who dared to dream of a world where man and nature could coexist in harmony. The first national park, Yellowstone, signed into law on March 1, 1872, was a turning point in United States history as the beginning of the future of land and environmental conservation. Drawing on the precedent of the Yosemite Act, Ulysses S. Grant signed the Yellowstone National Park Protection Act. Meant as a protective measure for the wildlife, plants, and geological features within, this park would be just the beginning of the current 63 national parks that make up what we know as the American Wilderness. Step back in time to the mid-19th century, a period marked by westward expansion and the relentless pursuit of a manifest destiny. With the Louisiana Purchase of 1803 opening up vast swaths of land to American settlers, the call of the frontier beckoned with economic opportunity. It was against this backdrop of exploration and conquest that the seeds of environmental conservation were sown. Later on, the annexation of Texas in 1845, the Oregon Treaty of 1846, and the Mexican Secession of 1848 acquired the rest of the contiguous United States as we know it and spurred a boom in the Western economy. The Western United States was exploited for its density in timber, coal, and other ore. As steam-powered sawmills of 1830 took hold and nationwide railroad construction began in 1815, resource extraction became economically simple and environmentally catastrophic. This migration peaked in the 1870s and had disastrous consequences among Native American populations. In the 1830s, smallpox spread by settlers killed half of the Pawnee population. The Mondon, Blackfeet, and Assiniboine were hit even harder, with only one-tenth of their people surviving the disease. The bison, once numbering in the millions and central to the livelihoods of indigenous peoples, faced near extinction as settlers hunted them to the brink in pursuit of profit and progress. As more settlers moved west, these massive harms to Native American lifestyles and livelihoods were pushed into the Rocky Mountains. An 1871 article from the New York Times captures the nation's sentiment around the Ferdinand V. Hayden exploration of Yellowstone. There is something romantic in the thought that vast tracts of the national domain yet remain unexplored. They are enveloped in a certain mystery, and their attractions to the adventurous are constantly enhanced by remarkable discoveries. As western boomtowns grew and the economy flourished, the federal government sent out explorers to formally map the land and take rock and plant samples. This project began in 1853 and was originally intended to plan transcontinental railway routes. Congress and the Union Pacific Railway proportioned $40,000 for the scientific trip. As Hayden and his team traversed the rugged terrain of Yellowstone, they encountered sites that defied the imagination. Their discoveries, captured in vivid detail through the lens of Civil War photographer William Henry Jackson and the brushstrokes of artist Thomas Moran, captivated the nation and galvanized support for the preservation of Yellowstone's natural treasures. When the team arrived in Washington, D.C. to present their findings to the president, Hayden strategically created a display for Congress, exhibiting the best of the paintings, photographs, and botanical samples in the Capitol Rotunda, under a painting of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. President Ulysses S. Grant signed the Yellowstone National Park Protection Act on March 1, 1872, which declared the park was hereby reserved and withdrawn from settlement, occupancy, or sale, and dedicated and set apart as a public park or pleasuring ground for the benefit and enjoyment of the people. Congress justified the protection of this vast territory through the future prospects of tourism. The growth of the Union Pacific Railway and the Northern Pacific Railway, along with the rising settler population, congressmen and nearby residents alike, reasoned that tourism in Yellowstone would be comparable to that of the Alps and the Himalayas. In the years that followed, Yellowstone underwent a period of transformation and growth. 
Early visitors to Yellowstone face challenging journeys to reach the park. Word of the park's geothermal wonders and diverse wildlife attracted many curious travelers, nearly 1,000 a year. Tourism to the park grew to around 5,000 annually after the summer of 1883, when the Northern Pacific Railroad Company extended its tracks to the northern entrance. Beyond arrival to the park, transportation within the park was incredibly challenging and expensive, making it accessible for only the wealthy. In the late 1880s, the U.S. Army was tasked with managing the park. Prior to that, poaching and destruction of geologic features was still common. They built roads, patrolled for poachers, and established orders over a large wild area. The presence of the military helped protect the park's resources during its formative years. As visitation increased, the need for infrastructure grew. Hotels and camps were established to accommodate tourists, and transportation within the park was improved. In 1886, the Yellowstone Park Transportation Company was established with help from the Northern Pacific Railway. Yet amidst the growing crowds and burgeoning infrastructure, threats to Yellowstone's ecosystem persisted. Unregulated hunting and poaching took their toll on wildlife populations, leading to the passage of poaching laws. In actuality, these laws harmed the Shoshone, Crow, and Buffalo tribes within the park, restricting food sources and in turn pushing them off of park grounds. The legacy of Yellowstone extends far beyond its borders, inspiring a wave of conservation legislation in the years to come. The creation of the National Park Service in 1916 marked a new chapter in environmental stewardship, unifying parks under one system. Park governance and conservation efforts became more effective with the help from agencies, funding, and advocacy from the federal government. In 1970, the Environmental Protection Agency was established under the Nixon administration. The modern environmental movement gained momentum in the late 1960s and early 1970s due to the increasing awareness of air pollution, oil spills, and water contamination. Similar to Yellowstone, the creation of the EPA marked a significant step in consolidating federal efforts to protect the environment. Using this precedent, the EPA regulates pollution and addresses broader environmental concerns beyond individual parks. Outside of legislation, the success of the parks themselves marks the lasting legacy of the Yellowstone Park Protection Act. The National Park Service currently encompasses 63 parks, along with hundreds of national monuments across the country. Compared to the 1,000 annual visitors of early Yellowstone, this park currently hosts around 3.29 million people each year. The benefits of Yellowstone National Park are also seen through the success of its century-long commitment to conservation. Early interest in preservation of the park means that the same diverse ecosystem present thousands of years ago remains strong there to this day. Yellowstone is home to a herd of nearly 6,000 bison who have thrived there for generations. Although the national park system as a whole boasts many benefits environmentally and economically, it does not go without criticism. Certain Native American activists explain that many national parks are ancestral homelands wrought with spiritual and historical significance. Specifically in Yellowstone, Native American tribes historically used the region to hunt, fish, quarry obsidian, and use thermal waters for religious and medicinal purposes. Beginning in 1996, certain tribes of this region requested to be a part of the park's management. Currently, 27 tribes are formally associated with Yellowstone National Park's decision-making and management. In the words of John Muir, climb the mountains and get their good tidings. Nature's peace will flow into you as sunshine flows into trees. Yellowstone captured the imagination of artists and scientists alike. Socialites, writers, and politicians took pride in the outdoors. The national park system gave way to the broader cultural perception of the American West as boundless and wild. While it has produced many benefits till this day, it is also worth examining its complex place in history. The fact that the best idea America ever had was funded in part by railroad lobbyists, that art was used to mysticize and mythologize the West, and that the National Park Service was largely constructed upon the mountain of harm done to Native Americans, exemplifies themes present throughout U.S. history. The creation of Yellowstone National Park was a turning point in the history of environmental conservation. The act set a precedent for environmental legislation that not only protects the 63 national parks, but the entirety of the United States. The conservation of the area not only preserved the forest and wildlife, but also cemented a new idea of the Wild West.